Hello everybody and welcome back to Python for Aerospace. In today's video, we're going to use a class and methods to create uh, uh, whatever four digit series airfoil uh, you, you prefer. So let's start uh, right after the intro. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. All right, so let's um, start uh, and pick up our code from where we left uh, last time. Uh, so most of the work is actually already done because we have uh, already the algorithm that generates the geometry of, uh, uh, of whatever airflow we want, but we would like to have a class where we can um, have everything more in a more compact uh, format, okay, just to uh, store all the information in uh, uh, different objects uh, whenever we create a different airflow. So first of all, let's, let's define a method, okay? Uh, that um, we can call, for example, this method uh, NACA for uh, digits, digits geometry, uh, sorry, coordinates. Okay, so what this function will do is gonna take as an input our NACA four digits uh, series number and uh, uh, the number of points we want to have uh, uh, to construct the geometry of the airflow. So in our case, uh, we can set up, uh, for example, 300 points uh, to, to, to begin with as a default volume. So let's add some comments uh, to the function. I'm gonna use my notes, okay? And you can find uh, all, all of these uh, in GitHub as always. So, okay, so we have some description and uh, we can start by moving out uh, of the function all the um, packages and libraries that are needed for this task. So NumPy, mod, uh, matplotlib, and OS are out of our function. Since NACA and N coordinates are our input values, we don't need to write it down here. We can remove them. And then we can uh, give a tab to all of this uh, lines of code, which are now part of the function itself. We can also move this out of our cell for the moment. Let's put it somewhere where it doesn't bother us. Okay. So we have our function here with our inputs. Here's the algorithm. Okay. And then we can return our uh, output, outputs, which in our case will be, for example, x and y for the x and y of, uh, are the coordinates of the geometry of the airflow. Then we have uh, the core, the camber line, and the NACA series, okay? Number, good. Um, I would like to add uh, one more thing uh, to this function, which is a check uh, that um, sees if the, the input variable okay, is formed by four digits. If it's not, the function will uh, raise an error and uh, the, the, then it will fail. So you have to be careful. So let's write down. If the len of, of NACA is different than four, okay, then uh, our function will raise an exception, exception, yeah exception, and it will say uh, NACA uh, is not a four-digit series, okay? Good, let's test the function. Uh, it's very simple, then we grab, we call the function down here at the bottom we can create a, uh, we can use again our 4418 air, uh, airfoil and let's run and see if we have any error. So the function seems to be working. We get our outputs here, as you can see. We will test later if they are correct or not. 
very good. So how to proceed from here? Uh, we could create a, uh, a class, for example, right? Where, uh, which is called at the end of this, uh, of this function. So in such a way that, for example, we can create an object called, for example, uh, Naka 4418 equals to this, and the output will be an object created by the class. So let's define the class first. So we, we, call, uh, we can create a class named Naka, and uh, uh, we can initialize it by defining the method in it in it like this, which takes an, as input self. And uh, what else does it take as an input? Well, I would use these values as inputs. So, uh, so yeah. And these values are then stored again in self, which is this variable, which is shared throughout the whole class. So whatever other uh, method I define here, it will take, uh, it will be able to access this variable self. So, and self contains um, x, then contains self uh, y, self dot c equal to c, self dot big C equal to capital C. And finally, we have self dot, I will rename it as a series equal to, and also this one will be series. And one variable I'm forgetting that can help us is the number of coordinates. Uh, so we can store also the number of coordinates in here self dot like this good let's save and uh, now let's see if we can initialize um, our object okay so we could call the object here and create it let's test and see if we encounter any error so yeah, we have an error. Uh, I will go through it and search what the mistake is. All right, now that I found the mistake, uh, we need to add the number of coordinates as well as an input in our uh, class. So let's add it here and save it within self. So self is equal to, okay, number of coordinates. So good, now, uh, I think this should be working. Yeah, almost. And uh, let's add uh, finally another method that will allow us to plot on demand the shape of the of the airfoil. Okay, because right now we set uh, uh, our function apart here, so we didn't use it yet for the plotting. So let's create within our class another method called plot, and. Um, uh, yeah, it's going to take an input on itself, self, oh, okay, and uh, the, the code that goes within it is already here, we wrote it in our previous uh, lesson, let's copy paste it and make sure that all the indentations are correct. Now, notice one thing, um, that all our variables, x, y, c, capital C, and so on, uh, are preceded by self this time. So before in the previous lesson, you had just x, now you have self.x, self.y, and so on. And here, you, instead of Naka, you have self.series, and, and that's it, okay? So uh, we, I think we are good right now. Let's r run it, and we don't have any mistake. Um, so for me, this is a good sign. So let's try now to check uh, uh, if the object contains uh, the attributes that created before. So let's type um, uh, name of the object dot tab. Let's hit tab and yes, we can see uh, the content, right? 
uh, let, let's print, for example, the x coordinate. It's right here as we wanted. Good. So uh, let's also see, for example, the geometry of the airflow. And this can be done very easily because now we have our plot method that we defined. And uh, if we hit uh, Shift Enter, yes, there it is. That's our airflow. We can create as many objects as we want. As a matter of fact, we can copy, for example, this uh, multiple times and change the na name of the airfoils or change the airfoil series. So we can do 24, uh, 18, or 24, 12, actually. I like it better. And let's create another object like this. And then we can have, for example, 0012. Okay. And let's run it. Okay. Yeah, there's a small mistake here. And good. Yeah, you can see three different airfoils, and they are looking, looking good. They are correct, as expected. So again, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about uh, methods and classes. In the next lesson, we're going to proceed and use the expo library to calculate the aerodynamic coefficients around whatever uh, airfoil uh, we have. And we're going to also try to store all the functions used to calculate the aerodynamic coefficients within uh, our, uh, our class here, NACA so that we will be able also to plot on demand the, the curves uh, of the lift coefficient, drag coefficient, uh, or um, the, the pr uh, pressure coefficient as well, for example. So I hope you see you in the next video, and uh, talk to you later.